Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to answer a question that a subscriber asked me in regards to uncertainty during patient encounters. And just to give you a little bit of backstory, this person is an EMT that's somewhat new to EMS, and he feels like sometimes he's it's hard for him to remember how to correlate what he's read in the textbook comparing to what he's seeing being presented in the patient. So. In this video, I'm basically going to give you the cardinal signs for the most common job types that we run across. First and foremost, if it's a stroke, you have persons that are alter mental status, they have really high blood pressure, and they could be exhibiting signs of one-sided or both-sided weakness, right? In general, there's more information, whether it's an ischemic stroke, whether it's a hemorrhagic stroke, and there's different parts of the homunculus that represent where the body is working and what part of the brain has the stroke but in general that's how a stroke presents trauma that's self-explanatory heart attack you have people that have heart attacks they can present asymptomatically or with a typical presentation i'm sorry atypical presentation and typical presentation typical presentation heart attack is a person who has chest pain that radiates to their jaw and to their left arm atypical is like an elderly lady who has a diabetic history and she's complaining of a stomach ache and then when you put it on the ekg she has a 12 lead elevations on two contiguous leads that's a, an example of atypical atypical basically means a person who doesn't present as the majority of other patients. Another call that we go on on a regular basis is asthma. Check out this video on how to treat asthma. Basically, these people are tripoding. And by the way, asthma is very particular because it's also an obstructive pulmonary disease just like COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But COPD and asthma are different in the way that asthma is a reactive airway disease and COPD is not. Basically, asthma is more like reactive to allergies and things that are causing bronchospasms, right? So, that being said, the treatment is different for both, or similar but different in that COPD patients do not receive epinephrine for example and another thing I want to say is that they both present very similarly so tripoding difficulty of difficulty breathing and the person with asthma another thing that you could use to distinguish between asthma and COPD is that asthma patients tend to be younger and COPD patients tend to be older not to say that there's no outliers within this general rule but for the most part that's the way it is so wheezing tripoding cyanosis and by the way when it's that bad all right what i mean is accessory muscle usage cyanosis you better hurry up and put this person on oxygen next ape pulmonary edema check out this video on how to treat pulmonary edema basically they have the cardinal signs of pulmonary edema, hypertension, fluid retention, difficulty breathing, rails in the chest. Rails in the chest is basically you listen to it, you also take their lung sounds and it sounds like they have water in their lungs because they're literally retaining fluid everywhere. The legs, when it's really bad, they get ascites like a inflamed or swollen stomach and their lungs, right? Like I said, check out that video. That video has a much more detailed breakdown. As far as when a person's tachycardic, you know, let's say you're an EMT and you're not able to put this person on EKG, all you have to do is just take their pulse and you'll feel it going really fast, or you'll feel it. Very irregular. Either way. Now, EKG is the, the, the best way to determine what's going on with this patient, but a simple pulse could help you with that, right? And as an EMT, you don't have to really worry about whether it's an AFib, a flutter, 
and all that stuff because that, those are things that you could appreciate mostly on the EKG. But just so you can know, if a person is complaining of palpitations, difficulty breathing, or anything within that realm, take their pulse and you'll see whether or not they're having a rapid heart rate. Now, if your heart rate assessment is over 150 beats per minute, then that's something to worry about. Anything over 100 is something to note, but especially when it's over 150 beats per minute, right? And another thing is, call for backup. Don't worry about it. Let me see. Bradycardia, same thing. Assess their pulse. If it's below 60, that's something that needs to be noted, especially if it's below 50, because you have people like myself, a resting heart rate due to the fact that I work out or try to work out on a daily basis, my resting heart rate is really, really low. And so is my blood pressure. That's another thing. When you take pers a person's vital signs, you have to make sure that the person, uh, this is like a baseline vital sign for them. So if you run across a, a, a vital sign that is low, don't get startled. Make sure that is a baseline vital sign for them. And let me see. Anaphylaxis, self-explanatory, crazy allergic reaction. Uh, those present with hives, difficulty breathing. Uh, usually people panic. I know I've had allergic reactions and it's pretty scary. Um, yeah, and those are the most common calls we go on. Uh, if I forgot one, feel free to comment down below chime in if you have any question let me know all right joe this one's for you joe tell timothy i said what's up my ortho pa my brother peace